Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate the second Monday of Advent, and we also remember St. Ambrose of Milan, who is a very well-known saint, and we'll talk more about him later. And we also commemorate the 79th anniversary of the bombing of Pearl Harbor, which brought the United States into World War II. And so on this day, let us begin as we always do in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so that by following your holy will, we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us take a moment and confess our sins to God in ways that we have failed him and our neighbor in thought, word, and deed, so that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. Please now make an examination of your conscience. Let's say together the first form of the confidier. Almighty Father, you know my deepest secrets. I confess that I have, through my own fault, sinned against your holy laws. In my thoughts, in my words, and what I have done or failed to do, I sincerely regret my sins, and I am truly sorry for offending you. I ask, Father, that in your mercy you pardon my sins, I promise to change my way of living so that through a deeper holiness, I may better serve you throughout the rest of my life. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. For your penance, I would ask you to do one kind thing for someone else sometime in the next 24 hours. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And may our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me, I absolve you from all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony, to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, God of Israel, you sent your prophets to prepare the way for our salvation. Prepare our hearts that we may joyously hail the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and always live according to his teachings. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The desert and the parched land will exalt. The steppe will rejoice and bloom. They will bloom with abundant flowers and rejoice with joyful song. The glory of Lebanon will be given to them. The splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the hands that are feeble. Make firm the knees that are weak. Say to those whose hearts are frightened, Be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication. With divine recompense, he comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared, 
Then will the lame leap like a stag. Then the tongue of the mute will sing. Streams will burst forth in the desert and rivers in the steppe. The burning sands will become pools and the thirsty ground springs of water. The abode where jackals lurk will be a marsh for the reed and papyrus. A highway will be there called the Holy Way. No one unclean may pass over it, nor fools go astray on it. No lion will be there, nor beast of prey go be met upon it. It is for those with a journey to make, and on it the redeemed will walk. Those whom the Lord has ransomed will return and enter Zion singing. Crowned with everlasting joy, they will meet with joy and gladness. Sorrow and mourning will flee. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is, our God will come to save us. Our God will come to save us. I will hear what God proclaims, the Lord, for he proclaims peace to his people. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him, glory dwelling in our land. Our God will come to save us. Kindness and truth shall meet, justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall come from heaven. Our God will come to save us. <clears throat> the Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him, and salvation along the way of his steps. Our God will come to save us. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Behold, the King will come, the Lord of the earth, and he himself will lift the yoke of our captivity. Alleluia, alleluia. May Almighty God cleanse my heart and my lips. I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. One day, as Jesus was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law, who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, were sitting there. And the power of the Lord was with him for healing. And some men brought on a stretcher a man who was paralyzed. They were trying to bring him in and set him in his presence. But not finding a way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on the stretcher through the tiles into the middle in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, As for you, your sins are forgiven. Then the scribes and Pharisees began to ask themselves, Who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who but God alone can forgive sins? Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them in reply, what are you thinking in your hearts? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, rise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the one who was paralyzed, I say to you, rise, pick up your stretcher, and go home. He stood up immediately before them, picked up what he had been lying on, and went home, glorifying God. Then astonishment seized them all, and they glorified God. And struck with awe, they said, We have seen incredible things today. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today, as I mentioned, we are celebrating two different memorials. Or I should say memorializing two different memorials. First is that of St. Ambrose of Milan. St. Ambrose was born in the city of Trier, 
which is now in present-day Germany, but was then a part of the, I believe, French or Italian Empire. And he studied law and became a rather good lawyer. But there's a story about him when he was a very, very young, almost newborn child. A swarm of bees went around his face and landed on his face and dropped a drop of honey. They didn't harm him. They just dropped the drop of honey. And that was seen as a sign that he would have what we would call a honey tongue or the gift of speech, which he indeed ended up having. St. Ambrose was very reluctant to become a bishop. In fact, he was not even ordained when the people of Milan implored upon him to become their bishop. So he had to find a way to learn theology and become ordained first a deacon, then a priest, and then eventually a bishop. And he ended up being a very, very good bishop, fighting Arianism and the leadership at the time, the civil leadership, were very much in the Arian camp. And through his speech, he was able to convince more and more people that the Nicene way, as opposed to the Arian way, was the right way. And his speech impressed someone else very, very much. And that is perhaps a little bit better known saint, St. Augustine of Hippo. St. Augustine, as some of us know, through his work, The Confessions, lived a very ill-resolute life of hedonism almost. And, and his mother, uh, St. Monica, prayed for him quite a bit. But that was until he heard St. Ambrose. And through St. Ambrose's tutelage, St. Augustine learned the faith and came to love the faith. <laughs> Excuse me and was even baptized by St. Ambrose. So St. Ambrose, someone we should definitely look up to, and he lived in the fourth century AD. But also today, we remember the attack on Pearl Harbor 71 years ago today, in about an hour or so from now, as this is being recorded. And this event, this singular event, I dare say about 15% of the population in the United States was not even alive at the time. And perhaps even less of us even have any memories of it, myself included. So I did a little research today into the specifics of this attack and found out something even I didn't know up until this time, that a declaration of war had not yet been made by Japan when the attack occurred. So those who died, the 2,200 plus who perished that day, most of whom were between 18 and 20 years old, by the way, they were non-combatants. They were innocents. And also, another aspect that I did not know was that there was, during that attack, was the only time firefighters in the United States were attacked by a foreign power. About six Honolulu firefighters were fighting a fire when they were fired upon by an aerial machine gun. And those who survived were, post, were, were awarded in 1984 Purple Heart, the first ever to go to non-military personnel. And to think about the horror of that day takes me to this reading from Isaiah that we heard today the desert and the parched land, all the bad things will all be changed when the Son of Man comes. And indeed, on that day, that must have seemed like Armageddon to those who were there. And many of the survivors never spoke of it to their families. But what they lived through could never be forgotten. And indeed, it is a day that will forever live in infamy the day that America was attacked without a declaration of war for the first time. Of course, we know that happened one other time, too, 19 years ago. But as we remember Pearl Harbor and the attack, we must not forget the bravery and courage of those 
who were there and take heart from them. Because during the season of Advent, that is the time for us to be ready for attack. My brothers and sisters, it cannot be denied that we of faith, pure people of faith, who are truly true believers, are under attack today. And that may be rhetorical now, but that soon may be a little bit more concrete. So during this time of Advent, perhaps we can take heart in these words from Isaiah and also from our gospel, where the faith of the paralytic and his friends that dropped him through the roof saved him. It was through faith, a certain and assured faith in Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, no matter what comes, be it good times or bad, even if we are attacked either rhetorically or by bombs, we need to stand fast in that faith of Jesus Christ and be prepared to, to die even for that because it is in that where we find eternal life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. With confidence to the, in the God who always hears us, let us offer our prayers and petitions to the Father. And our response will be, come, Lord Jesus, come. For Prime Bishop Anthony, Bishop Jerry, and all shepherds of the church, that they may continue to inspire us to live in the expectation of the Lord's coming, we pray to the Lord, come, Lord Jesus, come. For all world leaders, that God may guide their decisions in order to promote the common good, assure justice and peace, fight and fight against the scourge of abortion in our world, we pray to the Lord, come, Lord Jesus, come. For those who are experiencing despair and need, that they may find hope through God's presence and the generous response of our faith community, we pray to the Lord, come, Lord Jesus, come. For each of us worshiping together, the Advent will be an occasion for deepening our personal encounter with Jesus, especially in the sacrament of reconciliation. We pray to the Lord, come, Lord Jesus, come. For the ill, the brokenhearted, the lonely, and the isolated, that they may know God's earnest and profound love for them, we pray to the Lord, come, Lord Jesus, come for whom this Mass is being offered, which are those survivors of Pearl Harbor who are still with us, and also those who perished on that day. And for all those intentions, we hold deep in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord, come, Lord Jesus, come. For all who have died and those who will die today, that they may experience the abundance of new life in God's heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord, come, Lord Jesus, come. Loving Father, in your kindness and mercy, hear our prayers spoken and unspoken and grant us the grace needed to lead lives which are holy and pleasing to you. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Shout for joy, O daughter Zion. Sing joyfully, O Israel. Be glad and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You have no further misfortune to hear. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. May it become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this wine, 
and water, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, may it become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, and bless this sacrifice which we have prepared for the glory of your holy name. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Receive this offering, most holy trinity, which we make in memory of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints. May they whose memory we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice from my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the benefit of his holy church. Heavenly Father, receive our prayers as we prepare this sacrifice before you. Fill our hearts with your love and peace so that we may know the presence of your Son among us. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For through the promised sending of Jesus Christ to earth for us, you revealed your goodness and unending love. Sharing in the hope of patriarchs and prophets, may we worthily prepare a dwelling place for the coming Messiah in our hearts. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the saints in the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy Sacrifice of the Mass will continue with Eucharistic Prayer 5, found on page 92 if you're following along. Blessed are you, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercy and God of all consolation. For you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He then established a lasting memorial of your salvation. On the evening in which he willingly surrendered himself, he took bread, gave you thanks, blessed it, and broke it, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which is given for you. When supper had ended, he took the cup. In the same way, he gave you thanks and blessed it, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. So, we recall before you, Father, the incarnation of your Son, his words and deeds, how he humbled himself and obediently accepted death, even death on the cross. Because of, Therefore, you have raised him up and given him a name which is above every name, so that in heaven and under the earth every knee shall bow and every tongue proclaim to the glory of God the Father, 
Jesus Christ is Lord. We offer the sacrifice of your Son before you, Father, with praise and thanksgiving, and ask that you accept this oblation. Send your Holy Spirit and fill these gifts with his life-giving power, that they may be for us the body and blood of your dearly beloved Son. Grant that the bread which we break may be the body of our Lord, and the cup over which we give thanks may be one with the blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. The company of Mary, the mother of God, with your apostles and martyrs, with holy Willibrod, Ambrose, and all the saints, together with Anthony, our prime bishop, and Jerry, our bishop, and with all bishops, priests, and deacons, as well as your whole church, we praise and glorify you and look forward to the coming of your beloved Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. <clears throat> Let's say together the first communion prayer on page 97. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be potted from you. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Please join me now in the act of spiritual communion. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen.
Lord, may I possess with a pure heart that which I have taken as food. May the gift I have received bring me healing and strength now and forever. The one who gives this testimony says, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Let us pray. Eternal Father, may we who have been fed at the table of the Lord now fervently carry on your work of love and service in the world. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the peace and blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you now and forever and ever. Amen. Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me now in the prayer of St. Michael. Holy Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safe God against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Please join me now in a prayer for peace in our world country, state, and locality with the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant not so much that I may seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, thank you for joining us for Mass today. We'll be back tomorrow for the Solemnity of the Conception of Mary, and also Wednesday and Thursday at noon as well, Central Standard Time. And we pray that you have a wonderful day, a wonderful week. May you be blessed, may you stay in a state of grace, and take care of yourselves, take care of each other.